Hey YouTube, it's Numistaka and I'm here with you today looking at real and absolute quality being auctioned at Baldwin's in St. James. And uh, Charles Gaspar Edward Wonder, who died uh, recently, unfortunately, of leukemia, uh, a young man and uh, an enthusiast about collecting coins, believed both in quality in a massive way and also quantity because he built up an extensive collection of some of the most beautiful sovereigns and uh, silver coins and Swiss coins uh, that I've seen and they're all being auctioned and uh, the auction is happening um, Wednesday the 26th which will be uh, probably just passed when you see this and I was very privileged to go to the auction preview to take some video for you guys and show you some of these absolutely amazing coins. This one is probably the star lot and it is absolutely astonishing. Proof 64 DCAM 1817 Sovereign. Um, there are almost none of these coins known. Any um, pre-Victorian proof sovereign is pretty amazing. But just look at this coin. I mean, this is the one to get. This one is absolutely fabulous. And uh, I would absolutely love this in my collection. But alas, uh, my, um, my budget will not uh, run to this coin. But uh, some lucky a wealthy person is going to be extremely lucky. For collectors whose cash is not flowing at that kind of rate, then perhaps this exceptionally beautiful coin would fit the bill. This is an 1817 Mint State 63 coin, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. I think clearly uh, Charles Wander um, picked out absolutely amazing coins. I read in the uh, the blurb uh, for the auction that uh, he was married to a uh, a woman who worked in the rare coins department at the British Museum and uh, maybe it was her eye for some of these exceptional coins that resulted in him making this uh, superb collection. So how about this one? 1821 1821, there were uh, proof sets from the Royal Mint, not very many of them, but this is an 1821 proof sovereign from the Royal Mint proof set that year. Um, beautiful condition. This would be absolutely uh, amazing for anyone who uh, collects pr older proofs, uh, as I do, and I would like to have this one in my collection, but... Uh, I don't know. I am planning to maybe pick up one of the coins in the Charles Wander collection, but uh, it'll have to be a surprise as to which coin I manage to buy, if any, depending on how high the prices go. So in 1821 in PR63 DCAM, followed by a very interesting coin. This one is a, an 1825 Laureate head uh, with the with the uh, the laurel wreath round uh, his head, and uh, very unusual because um, very very few 1825s have this particular pattern, and uh, you certainly don't see them very often in really good mint state. So this one is likely to go for quite a large amount of money at the auction. Very very nice coin, beautiful condition, and the uh, the rarest of the two heads. Uh, they've got the bare head and the one with the laurel wreath around the head and uh, just a really, really nice coin. This one is an 1825 and this one is a, um, it's a kind of proof of record or a pattern proof, but uh, they, it wasn't one of the years that there was a mint set produced by the Royal Mint. That was 1826, which you'll see shortly. In 1825, there were a few produced, only very, very few, and there were some produced with a reeded edge, there were some produced with a plain edge. This one here is the one with the plain edge, lovely shield pattern on the back, mirrored finish, 
just a beautiful proof coin, um, just you know a really um, an example of uh, may have been some may have been produced for a VIP, it may have been produced for review in some way, um, but it wasn't really the kind of thing sold to the general public. This one with a plain edge, and here is the other one, the pair of them. This one is a an 1825 with a reeded edge. Um, I think the rarity of these two coins is pretty much the same, although there may be some difference in the population reports of these. Very few have been uh, graded. Uh, I looked at the NGC population, PCGS. There's literally a handful of these coins that have been, um, been graded so far. Very low population, very beautiful coins. Uh, premium on these coins over the regular year set coins. And something you don't get to see very often is both of them together because uh, as far as I can see they're, they're very rarely seen at auction together but here you've got the 1825 pattern proof plain and reeded edge uh, coins although you can't really see very clearly from my video and I do apologize that uh, all these coins when I went to see them were in double wrapped plastic so it uh, wasn't very very easy at all to uh, get good uh, photography or video with too many reflections. This one you're looking at here now is the one that comes out the regular uh, proof set. Nothing really regular about it. And the, I've seen the pr full proof sets um, sell at auction for, what, about £120,000, something like that, for the, for the one with everything in it. But um, there weren't that many produced uh, in the hundreds. And... Uh, this one is the one that comes out, the regular one. Uh, generally, at, at auction, you find that the condition of the ones that come out the, uh, the sets are a little bit higher. The grades in the population uh, of both grading companies are a little bit lower for the um, pattern and the proof of record coins. When you think Victoria proofs, you think uh, 1839, you think... Uh, 1887 and 1893 but in fact there were a few uh, record proofs produced in uh, 1853 like this one very very rare coin that will sell for an awful lot of money and 1871 and I think between 1853 and 1871 I think 1853 is slightly the rarer of those and there were other ones that you'll see here as pattern proofs from 1838. And I think there are also 1837 as well. And uh, you know, there were probably, for a number of years, a few of these coins produced. This one is uh, an absolutely amazing coin. I think it's um, meant to be pretty unique in terms of its quality for a coin which is already exceptionally rare. It doesn't have the words narrow shield on the label, which maybe it should have, but it is an 1843 narrow shield, uh, narrow shield shield back coin. So there were two types of shields. There's one which is a narrow shield. You can see here the narrow shield, a bit narrower. The reef goes a little bit higher towards the crown. And uh, no one knows really, I haven't been able to find out, maybe somebody can tell me why these were produced but it may be that a number of them were produced and then they got melted. But the numbers of narrow shield coins that have been found or turned up is extremely low. Very, very lovely coin. Here's an 1839. Uh, this is the, the standard one from the Royal Mint set, 1839. Uh, one of my favorites, absolutely lovely. Um, probably will have a lot of bidders going for it. Uh, proof 62, so maybe um, it's a little bit on the low side in terms of grade, but you can see here it presents very, very nicely, and uh, it's certainly a really nice coin. It's always struck me as a bit strange that the 1839 always sells for better money than the 1887 or the 1893. And I think it may just be this shield pattern. Uh, on the back and I think people look for the shield pattern in regular sovereigns think it's a little bit better more prestigious and maybe that rubs off a little bit on the young head 1839 proof as well here is another narrow shield 
Uh, there were narrow shields uh, found for 19, 1838 and 1843. Um, the 1838 is meant to be, I think, a little bit um, rarer than the 1843. However, this one isn't is is in circulated condition. It's in AU condition compared to the mint state of the other one. This might sell. It's expected to sell for a little bit less money than the other one. But we'll see what happens at the auction and, and how much both of these coins go for. Next up is the standard 1838 sovereign. Uh, nothing much standard. Uh, I remember when my dad used to talk to me about sovereigns, he always used to say, try and pick up an 1838 and 1839. Uh, in the 80s, these were going for about £350 or so um, at Spink. And, uh, well, I mean, it's a few years later, but they're now going for, what, three and a half to £5,000 in good condition. So that would have been a pretty good investment, a pretty shrewd investment back in the 80s um, if I'd have had the money to buy one of those. Very, very nice coin. And uh, 1838s, 1839s, 1841s, all highly desirable and, uh, and particularly sought after dates by anybody who's uh, looking to build a collection of sovereigns. This one here just oozes quality. This is um, an 1838 proof sovereign, proof of record, pattern proof, and uh, it's just wonderful. It's got a little bit of a kind of funny patch there underneath her ear, a kind of dark patch, but great frosting, great mirrored uh, fields. It's, it's just really, really nice. Um, this is already, at the time I made this video, uh, got tons of uh, well well it's got tons of bids but it's got some very large bids on it and this is likely to go for quite a large amount of money and uh, this is why I mean you don't these don't come up very often they come up every few years and there aren't very many of them and uh, this is one that anybody who who has a good collection of quality sovereigns uh, this is exactly the kind of coin they're going to be after I guess This one here is a uh, William IV Sovereign, 1831. This one comes out of one of the proof sets of that year. Uh, very nice coin, lots of good frosting on that, high grade. This is um, a very nice coin. I'm sure we'll have quite a few um, bits of interest amongst bidders. Um, it probably won't go for as much as some of the pattern sovereigns and maybe some of the... Uh, the kind of better stranger date sovereigns. You'll see some of those here in this video, but I think it'll have quite a lot of interest. Another William IV sovereign. This one is an 1830. Of course, 1830, the Royal Mint didn't produce any special sets for collectors. So this one is a kind of pattern uh, or proof of record, but it's, uh, it's one that was produced for, I guess, internal or VIP consumption, not as part of sets that were provided or sold to the general public. Um, nice coin, though. This is one of the very few that I've already got in my collection, although my one is a 63 DCAM and this one is a 63 plus, but uh, my one's pretty good. This one is pretty good. And uh, of the three standard Victorian sovereign proofs, uh, this one is always, for some unknown reason, the cheapest. The mintage numbers were not too dissimilar amongst the others, 
but the 1839 is consistently the most expensive. The 1893, the next expensive, and the 1887 is always the cheapest of the three, which is probably why I started uh, in my quest for all three of them with the 1887. This is not just any old proof. This is uh, no less than an 1871 proof, which uh, there were no official uh, sets produced in 1871. So this is another one of those um, proofs of record. So uh, very, very nice. And this one, the proofs of record, the ones in the odd years, when you find them, they do seem to go for uh, quite a lot more than the standard year proofs. Not surprisingly, they're rarer coins, but uh, they're nice to have for collectors filling in who are already fabulously wealthy enough to have all the other regular ones in their collection. Uh, what do they need? They need an 1853 and an 1871, both of which they can pick up in this auction. Favourite, favourite parts of the world for sovereigns and shieldback sovereigns particularly is Australia. And the sovereign which is the rarest of the Australian sovereigns is, um, well, there's lots of rare Australian sovereigns, but the rarest of the set of Melbourne shieldbacks is the 1887 uh, M Melbourne shieldback, uh, this one here. So this one got an MS-61, and uh, there were very few shieldbacks um, in 1887. The Melbourne one is much, much rarer, I think, than the Sydney 1887. Um, but it's got these almost proof-like kind of uh, mirrored fields. It's not a proof coin, but you can see a lot of reflection on that background to the shield, uh, frosting on the shield, Really, really nice coin, uh, like that. Would love that one in my collection. This is the second rarest one, I think, which is the 1886 Melbourne. Um, a lot of people have 1884, which is the most common one. A lot of the others are much harder to find. 1882s are pretty hard to find as well. I've got a few of those. Uh, 1885 as well is uh, still pretty cheap. Uh, some of the others, much more difficult to find and these two, 1886 and 1887, are um, the top of that particular little Melbourne Shield Sovereign tree. If you haven't already heard the story of the uh, 1859 Ansel Sovereign, the brittle gold story, look it up uh, on my uh, video in the Numistaka video library, uh, the story of the Ansel Sovereign and how it came to be produced. It's quite a famous sovereign story. And you can tell uh, the Ansel Sovereigns because they've got an extra band on the, uh, the headband. And you look very hard, you can see that uh, on the sovereign. Nice little shield at the back. Um, you don't often see these in very, um, very high mint states. There are a few around, uh, but not that often seen and pretty expensive. Next, we've got a little bit of silver, and this is a 1935 proof. Again, 1935, there were no um, kind of mint sets. So the proofs are considered VIP proofs or proofs of record. There are quite a few years where these proofs of record or these VIP proofs are available and Charles Wander seems to have made a special collection of these proofs. Uh, quite a few of them are in the sale for different years and different denominations. They've got an estimate of round about 700 to 1,000 pounds for most of these coins, which are pretty difficult to find normally. You don't normally see so many in the same place. This one is a, another shilling, uh, 1940 shilling. 
I think if I were to buy one of these two, I think I'd probably buy the 1941. Um, seems to be overall in better condition and probably also uh, pretty much just as rare. Uh, although the catalogue did say the 1935 one was a little bit rarer than uh, some of the others. Extremely rare, they called it. Uh, but I kind of like the 1941 and it's possible I might have a bid on that. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Nice coin. I'm a bit of a sucker for George VI's coins anyway. This one is uh, 1960, and uh, again, they didn't produce a kind of public proof crown for 1960. Um, this one is a VIP one. 65 DCAM, um, pretty rare coin. This will probably go for about 12, 1400 pounds, something like that, plus buyer's premium. Nice little bit of frosting on the uh, on the shields on the back as well. I think a lot of people collect these VIP proofs, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them do pretty well at the auction. Uh, I think if you're going to collect these type of coins, VIP proofs seem a pretty cool thing to collect. 1893 uh, sovereign. This one is um, exceptional condition. It's a proof 65 coin. Very, very nice coin. Uh, this is a coin that's on my buying list. Uh, I don't know what this one will go for, but uh, we shall see. Very nice St George as well, lots of frosting. I think most people would be pretty happy with this coin in their collection. I hope you guys have enjoyed a little wander through the Wonder collection. Uh, I think it's a pretty wonderful collection myself. And um, I wish that uh, I was able to buy, you know, a handful of these coins because they would make a brilliant addition to my collection. Let me know what you guys think. And here's a few more co uh, videos that uh, might be of interest if you've been watching this one. It might be blank if uh, you're on mobile, but hopefully not.